Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Brad. I am the Life Groups and Men's Pastor at Valley Real Life. Uh, I, uh, sorry I'm late uh, getting on here. I was trying to figure out how to go live on Facebook, and uh, it was a little bit of a challenge, I will say, which is probably a good thing. Otherwise, I'd be going live a lot of times whenever I didn't intend to. So, Anyway, glad to be on here, uh, but uh, I hope your morning's starting off good. Um, why don't we start with some prayer uh, so I can calm my heart down, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Father, we just want to say thank you so much this morning. Thank you for the time we get to have together. I pray that as we all go to work and, uh, and, or do whatever we're doing, I just pray that you would... Uh, you would just be ahead of us in everything we do. God, we surrender. We, we heard the message yesterday, and God, we just want to say you are God and we're not. And God, we accept that today, and we ask you to lead us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, we are in Isaiah. We're continuing on in Isaiah. And um, unfortunately, I didn't see the first two of these devotionals, so uh, I hope I'm not going to repeat a few things, uh, but Isaiah, uh, you know, the prophets uh, are, uh, this is kind of, he's the first of the prophets, and he's kind of like the prince of the prophets, you know, he's a, uh, he's probably the most eloquent, and has the most, um, probably the most notoriety, uh, you see a lot of him in, that Jesus is quoting him a lot, uh, in what he says. Some people call this like the fifth gospel because there's so much about Jesus in this Old Testament prophet. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, I want to uh, just kind of give a little bit of a backdrop of what's happening. Um, so there were, uh, so um, Israel was being kind of um, threatened by Assyria. And so Israel uh, came in, and I think there were a total of four kings uh, that 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 Isaiah had the opportunity to kind of watch, um, kind of pursue Israel. So his whole prophetic ministry, he was looking at Assyria coming at them and beginning to invade. And we saw one king attack and and take over Israel. <clears throat> and then we saw another king attack and take over um, take over Samaria. And then another king started taking over Judah, took over the northern, uh, northern part of Judah. And then now Judah and Jerusalem are being, the capital of Judah is, is being threatened of being taken over by the Assyrian Empire. Uh, a massive empire that was dominating everything in its path. And this was kind of what, what Isaiah was talking to God's people with. He was saying, if you don't trust God, if you don't stop just doing what you think is right and doing what makes you feel good, controlling things, if you don't stop doing that, I'm going to allow you to be taken over. And of course what happens is uh, they don't stop. Uh, so then you see um, in chapter three, um, like he is, like God is telling the nation of Israel, or he's telling Judah uh, that this is what's going to happen if you don't stop. So, so then it says the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, this is in chapter 3, verse 1, uh, will take away from Jerusalem and Judea everything they depend on, every bit of bread and every drop of water. Uh, all their heroes and soldiers, judges and prophets, fortune tellers and elders, army officers and high officials, advisors, skilled sorcerers and astrologers. Um, I will make boys their leaders and toddlers their rulers. Like, listen to this. Like, the, the more I'm reading this, the more this sounds a little bit like America has been for the last 
15, 20 years, you know? Like, it, uh, it does feel like we have been going down this path where God has warned us uh, in a lot of things. But I don't necessarily want to go down that. I want to focus on this uh, and then apply this in our personal lives. Uh, you do see some very similar similarities, but I think it's important for us to not get sidetracked and for us to not, like, look at it as what can we control? What can we, uh, what can we do whenever we are going down this path of, of judgment? When we feel like God is is engaging us and we're not listening, we're continuing to pursue. I am currently uh, talking with some people who, um, who is like. I'm, I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And they don't want to. Uh, so I, uh, I worry uh, whenever I hear that because I want good things for them. Uh, and I believe that God's path is the best path for them. And so I look at this and I go, uh, this is what God was doing. He was seeing some people he loved very much and he was hoping they would turn back, right? So it says... Uh, he says, I'll make boys their leaders and toddlers their rulers. People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. Young people will insult their elders and vulgar people will sneer at the honorable. He goes on to talk about uh, in those days. Sorry, my, I'm uh, blocked here. There we go. Uh, in those days, a man will say to his brother, since you have a coat, you will be our leader. Take charge of the heap of ruins, but he will reply, no, I can't help. I don't have any extra food or clothes. Don't put me in charge. I want to notice one thing. This is what happens. Uh, there is great judgment that happens when uh, men fail to take responsibility for their lives. Uh, when men fail to take responsibility for, um, for um, what there needs to be responsibility for, and I'm not just saying men, but but men is what it's it's mentioning to mentioning here. But I will say, uh, we as people, when we fail to take responsibility of our lives, judgment comes in. And so uh, it also goes on to talk about. Um, it refers to Jerusalem when it's talking about Jerusalem. It says it has become haughty, and and it's like. It talks about how um, how arrogant Ju Jerusalem has become and how vain Jerusalem has become. They've sought all of the comforts. And it's almost like if you took uh, my wife's purse and you dumped it onto the table. And that's what God is doing in this passage through, through Isaiah. Uh, he's basically saying, look at everything that is in your purse right now and... I want you to know uh, this is not okay. Look at what your life is about. And that's what he begins to do. I am, uh, so I want to stop here uh, because I can go on and on because this whole whole passage, this whole chapter is on, um, is on judgment. It's basically God is judging uh, the nation of Israel, Samaria, Judah now, and uh, now it's going to the heart of Judah, which is Jerusalem. And he's saying, everything you were, you're about to lose because you will not surrender to who I am and what I am wanting to do. I can protect you. You don't have to protect yourself. And this is what's happening. And so they've started putting their energy toward what was valued at that time and they started trying to blend in to the rest of society. Um, and now here we are. Assyria is about to take them over. And God is allowing it to happen because they've stopped listening to him. Uh, you know, I will say this. Um, sometimes when we read the, the Old Testament, we look at it and we go, man, God was so judging at that point. But I want you to hear loud and clear a lot of what was happening here was because God was allowing uh, our actions to be to experience the full consequences, and so His judgment was to allow us 
to have the freedom we were demanding and we began to pull away from him uh, in this in this section of scripture is an example and this is what we continue to do we try to pull away from God in areas where he wants to lead us and I just want to encourage all of you to um, maybe allow God to to enter into those places where you are um, you're hesitant to let him uh, maybe you're afraid maybe you're going man I don't want to let go of this and I am uh, I, I just I want to encourage you to not allow yourself to face the judgment of your own decisions and allow God to come in and be your righteousness that's what this is all leading up to is that Christ is our righteousness and he will ultimately pay the price for all of these sins that we have done and from the Old Testament but now here we are and we've already received that gift and so let us not walk as as people who have forgotten what we have signed up for right like we I, I just want to ask you to allow God to bring you to a place of repentance wherever you are we all have something to surrender we all have something to repent from and so I just encourage you uh, to get on your knees with me this morning and allow God to do something brand new in your life uh, as you trust him in those hard areas of life. All right, guys. Hey, I hope you have an awesome day. Uh, I love you. I want to pray for you. Let me pray for you right now. God, I just want to pray for all of us. This is a hard message, and God, it's one that we don't actually dive into much anymore. Uh, but God, I just want to pray that you would help us to surrender to what you want. Help us not to... Uh, follow uh, our own path. Help us not to trust in our own ways, uh, but God, help us to trust what you're doing is the right thing. And God, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, have an awesome day, guys.